If you've engaged with pop culture and K-pop communities on the internet in the past five years, you've probably seen hundreds of tweets regarding Tanashi's influence in the music industry. Yeah, you're right. Let me try. From your local nugus like Daya and Zara Larson, to has-beens like Twice and Hyolin, to empire music makers like Lisa and Chloe, it has been stated that they've drawn inspiration and stolen entire flows from the entertainer. Some even go as far as to claim that the current landscape of the K-pop industry is a result of the work Tanashi has done in the past decade. An uninformed and ignorant individual would see the title of this video or hear that intro and think to themselves, how did Tanashi, a woman barely cracking 2,000 albums in pure sales, save the Korean pop music industry. How is it possible that a woman who hasn't seen a position on the Billboard Hot 100 in almost a decade somehow managed to change the entire landscape of an industry in a country on the other side of the world? Well, y'all constantly suspend your disbelief to convince yourselves slay as a group and I never questioned it. So let me have this. The fact remains, Tanashi has left a lasting impact on the K-pop industry and continues to be a source of inspiration for many idols, groups, and companies. I've discussed it before in a now deleted YouTube video, but today we will once again take a deep dive into her career and explain just how she saved the industry. Born in Lexington, Kentucky, Tanashi moved to Pasadena but got her start as a model and actress in the early 2000s. Her performances were critically acclaimed and she stood out to several critics. Her extensive filmography includes TV shows and movies like The Polar Express, Avatar The Last Airbender, Two and a Half Men, and Aquila and the Beat. In 2007, Tanashi and her friends formed the girl group The Stunners and snagged a deal with Columbia Records. Doing absolutely nothing for two years besides contributing one song to the iCarly soundtrack, the group left the company and signed a production deal with Lionsgate Entertainment in 2009. Later that year, the girls would release a five-track EP containing the singles We Got It and Dancing Around the Truth, featuring new boys. During this time, they performed on several morning shows and opened for Justin Bieber on his My World tour. Their final singles, Spin the Bottle and Santa Bring My Soldier Home, were released in December 2010, shortly before the group fortunately split in 2011. Following the disbandment of this group, Tanashi began pursuing a solo career, teaching herself how to record and mix music. She released a series of singles and mixtapes signed with RCA Records and began working on her debut studio album Aquarius in 2014. Her debut single, Too On, displayed great promise early in her career and became a worldwide hit. The song put her on the map not only in America, but in South Korea as well. This was the start of many K-pop idols and Korean R&B and hip-hop artists name-dropping her in interviews, songs, and videos as they expressed their love for Tanashi. Despite her ability to transcend cultural boundaries, Tanashi's career wasn't met with much commercial and critical success, and she began to head down an unfortunate and messy path, as many doubted her skills as an artist. She only received a hand full of nominations and awards for her work. Projects were underpromoted, pushed back, and scrapped. On top of this, she had to fight for and buy back her own demos from evil men. Her label forced her into a box in an effort to make her sound more digestible for white audiences, resulting in generic pop promotional singles. Following the split from RCA in 2019, many stands thought we'd either seen the end of Tanache or the start of something amazing. Since that departure, Tanache proved she was a resilient force to be reckoned with, releasing some of her best work to date on the album Song For You in 333. With these projects, Tanache gained her power and artistry back, doing it all without the help of a major label and recording company. And through it all, she still remains a source of inspiration for the girl, allegedly. As I mentioned earlier, many Korean idols and artists have expressed their admiration for Tanache, starting back in 2014 with the release of debut singles Too On and All Hands on Deck. Since then, she has had the entire country in a chokehold with both her music and her look. You can find Tanache in every inch of Korea, from wallpapers on computers and phones to lyrics in songs, to name dropping in interviews, to covers, and more. You could also argue that she has a lot of direct influence in their music and visuals, which has prompted the whole Tanache the Blueprint, Tanache has sons discussion online. Therefore, I want to go through every single Tanache alleged son individually. In July 2016, Tanache released Super Love, a Miami-based pop track, and she hasn't known peace since. It seems as though everyone in K-pop wanted a piece of that Super Love pie, while others became greedy and ravenous. The most infamous example comes from the 2018 song Woo Woo by the unsuccessful, unpopular, now disbanded post IOI K pop girl group Daya.
Before the comeback was fully released, many fans noticed that the concept looked and sounded very similar to Tanache's summer hit. And well, they were right. The song is an obvious ripoff of Super Love, but with its very minimal changes to the structure, it doesn't come close to their original at all, production and vocal wise. Despite the attention towards the group coming from plagiarism accusations, Cheyenne's virality, and Yevin's stint as a member of Unity, the song still was unable to crack the top 10 of Bug, something even Bo manages to do 20 plus years into her career even with a five-year hiatus in korea but back to the story in defense of the plagiarism, Daya fans known as Aid came up with the few bizarre and far-fetched stories that K-pop fans ended up believing until Tanache cleared the air. The most popular one was that Tanache wrote Woo Woo, gave the demo to MBK, and then sold them the rights to the music video. Because that makes all the sense in the world. I still see people believing that lie and spreading it as though it's the truth. Another one I often see is that Tanache is friends with the members and basically said, it's all good. Well, as we know, it is not. A tweet from the now suspended account reads, I'll never get over that K-pop girl group stealing the production, lyrical content, and the aesthetic of this whole video. Woo woo my ass. Tanache then likes a tweet of another person saying, LMAO, yo, the entire thing. The OP of the original tweet mentions Tanache and says, do you have something you want to share with the class? To which she responds, me and the director were tripping when we saw it. She wanted to sue them, LMFAO. Another user replies, so this was really done without your permission. Tanache says, lol entirely this information should have been common knowledge among people in the k-pop community but of course there were some people that genuinely believed that tanashi was okay with it or that she had a part in woo woo now everyone looks back on this moment as something to laugh about or an iconic moment in daya's rather forgettable career but i personally remember tanashi being met with so much anti-blackness both as a result from the tweet and the initial plagiarism accusations a year prior and it still happens to this day it's crazy to me because she and the director had a right to be upset by it and proceed however from there even then nothing came about it those girls are fine i they're disbanded but they're not in jail for plagiarism so k-pop fans hate giving black artists their credit despite the entire genre or at least 90 percent of it being inspired by black culture and they prove it time and time again as i stated earlier daya isn't the only k-pop artist that people believe are inspired by tanashi let's move on to another flop artist the topic of tanashi's motherhood came up again most recently when has been artists from jyp twice released two miami bass inspired k-pop tracks called basics in Moonlight Sunrise. I want you to hear me say Moonlight Sunrise Baby, come be my star They'll both give off different vibes, basics being more upbeat and Moonlight Sunrise a bit more relaxed. They're both flirty and fun tracks for white gays and diehard fans to get down to. Of course, I would give credit to the Korean Tanache verse for birthing basics. As we know, Momo is a big fan of Tanache. I love to get along, I love to get someone. But Moonlight Sunrise is more of a ripoff of 2022 chart topping hit Sweetest Pie. Last year, Tanache became a mother of 12 following the release of Not in Public by Nugu artist Summer K. another bouncy, flirty, fun dance track. There's influences of Miami or Atlanta bass along with breakbeat in there. So you know, I'm seated. Naturally, I'm gonna have to grant Tanache full custody of Summer Cake for this song in this song alone. But she does make some great music and you should check her out. Someone I often see left out of the discussion is Sori in her debut single, Touch. <laughs> which funnily enough was released almost a month after Daya's Woo Woo. Another song for the summer, more bikinis, electronic dance genre. I mean, it's crazy how I've never seen anyone bring it up before. I mainly hear the similarities between Super Love and Touch in the production and chorus. Even before Tanache fans and the rest of Black Twitter were aware of Hyolin, fans of Dolly were making the comparisons to Tanache. While it's not bar for bar like Daya's Woo Woo, it does sit within that realm of what Tanache did during the 2010s. The darker trap R&B sound with pretty synths in the background, her vocals and ad-libs, the styling, the music video. Remember, Hyolin is a Korean woman. It's all reminiscent of Tanache. Personally, it reminds me of No Drama, a track on Tanache's Joyride, which she 
release in January of 2018. Hyolin's Dali was released later that year in April. Now, while Hyolin had been doing her own thing in the industry for years, she never did something like Dali, both before and after its release. The closest she's ever gotten to it was in 2020 with Say My Name, which also gave me Tanache vibes. So maybe it was a little bit of a one and done type thing. It was her Christina Aguilera Dis My Sierra. XG has drawn similar comparisons with their most recent comeback. Both the generic trap pop track Shooting Star and 90s R&B pop influenced song Left Right have been compared to the Grammy award winning songstress. There was even a rumor that she had written the track, despite the track list credits being readily available. Now, Tanache is no stranger to generic pop music, but she wasn't the very first artist that popped up into my mind when I heard these songs. These tracks reminded me of corny ass artists like Ariana Grande, Boys World, Fifth Harmony, Kehlani, and so on. Personally, I can't think of any Tanache track that's similar to this outside of being within that realm of trap pop we love Tanache for. Therefore, at best, I can call them her estranged children, but she will not be responsible for that dookie. Yo, 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 yo. Now, I personally hate having to come to the defense of Lisa from Blackpink, but I cannot in my right mind say that this cover of some white girl song gives Tanache outside of her dancing ability. I don't know, pin that shit on Zendaya for the time being until Euphoria is over. There are many other tracks that remind me of Tanache, which I will play for you right now. The audience will probably disagree with me and may even get low down and gutter like your mother and start throwing tomatoes, but I must speak my truth. Now, you may be thinking to yourself at this point, how exactly has Tanache saved K-pop by influencing a bunch of nobodies and has-beens? Well, I will reveal that information on my Patreon starting at $30. At the end of the day, whether you like her or not, and whether you want to admit to it or not, Tanache's impact truly knows no bounds. It's clear to me that since her debut in 2014, she's been on the mood board for many creative directors and producers. Another thing becoming painstakingly clear to me is that my sister needs to change the password to her vault immediately before Tay Pre for a Black Girl Yawn pops out with a Save Room for Us or Feelings remake. In conclusion, the K-pop industry needs to pay her and you whack hoes need to respect her. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stream a lot of Tanache this Aquarius season and enjoy your day. Bye!